All right, it's a series of questions to get to the, the main issue. Uh, Shabir, would you uh, agree that uh, your God has attributes of personhood? Yes. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Man, I like that. He just answered a question. <laughs> just answered it. <laughs> no, that's what I do. I never heard it. It's probably off guard. I used to a three-minute answer, but thank you. All right. Um, would you agree with me? <laughs> Seriously, it took me up. It, it was good. Uh <laughs> It's quick and slick. It's all right. So, <laughs> okay. So, would you also agree that attributes of personhood are such things as fellowship, love, uh, awareness of others, and things like that? Yes. Okay. Was Allah able to express those full attributes from eternity? I, I don't know of any teaching in my tradition that comments upon that, and I haven't studied the philosophical issue related to that, so uh, I wouldn't be able to answer that. Okay, so you can't answer whether or not, this is correct, that your God, whom you have been defending for decades, who you recognize has attributes of personhood, and that w awareness of others and love is part of personhood, and yet without that, how does he express it? And you say, well, I don't know, right? That, that's your answer. Well, uh, when we discuss the issue of the Trinity and Unitarianism, we are going to get into issues of logic, which I know you know about, and uh, logic necessitates the foundation of uh, philosophical discussions. Colossians 2.8 says uh, that not to be held captive by vain philosophy. Did you understand what I said about the context of the Trinity uh, exemplifying the fullness of, of, of personhood, expression of personhood from eternity? Did you understand that concept? Yes, yes. And of course, okay. uh, I'm not totally devo devoid of, of any thoughts regarding that. Um, uh, but, you know, again, I don't want to venture uh, okay. too much into offering things which are just uh, guesses. But because you're pressing the point, allow me to say this this much, that uh, before God created and everything else, uh, he, he, um, he, he was perfect as, as he was. But you're saying for him to be perfect, he has to have the qualities of personhood. I don't know if that if that is a necessary uh, uh, derivative from from the idea that God is uh, God is perfect. Um, if if there are other uh, entities uh, who can be who can relate to each other as persons, and God is not able to relate to them as persons, then this would seem to be a lack, something that God is unable to do. Uh, but if you're asking me, before okay. God created everything else, if God alone existed, uh, you know, is there something lacking in him because he's not able to, uh, to uh, express personal qualities? Uh, I don't think that there's anything lacking in God in, in, at, at that stage. And okay. uh, the um, idea of creation, uh, did you want to say something well, else? Yeah, you've gone a long time there. Uh, but, okay, sure. Uh, Go ahead. I would, I would suggest you study the essential and emergent properties related to the nature of something because you'll uh, you'll find that there's problems with it inside of uh, Islam. At least we can have discussion about that in depth if you want. Another potential problem of Unitarianism is the issue of solitude. If we take an individual, and we can only do this by analogy, uh, this is not my best argument, but it's something worth discussing. If God relates to us, we recognize his personhood, and yet we're going to say that any single person existed for forever without fellowship, without love, without communion. My question is, how is that not a form of torture? Do you have any idea how to answer that? Well, it will be, you, you said yourself, uh, Matt, that many things are enigma enigmatic about God because uh, God is so different from everything else we have uh, seen and touched, um, uh, from everything because we haven't seen and touched God. Uh, so he's so different that we can hardly uh, prescribe for God how he should have been before he created uh, the universe. But add to this, uh, James McBrath in his book, The Only True God, has pointed out that uh, in the uh, first uh, century of Christianity, the idea of creation ex nihilo was not yet introduced uh, or not discussed at least. It became so in the middle of the second century. In Islam as well, I don't see that the idea of creation ex nihilo is a, uh, is a necessary uh, Islamic Well, we're uh, talking about ex creation ex nihilo, and it is found in the very first letter of the very first book of the, of the Bible, but that's another topic. <laughs> Uh, 
Um, the one in the many. Are you familiar with this issue of the one in the many? No, I'm not familiar with this issue. Okay. All right. Uh, so one duck, lots of ducks, duckness, and, and particulars, universals and particulars. One of the underlying discussions, I'm just going to help you out here, one of the underlying discussions that deals with the issue of logic and knowledge, and the precondition of all of those things must be God. He is the initial and the ultimate. The nature of your God, the nature of my God is different. Your God cannot account for universals and particulars where my God can. That's something also worth discussing because if we have another discussion, I'll be asking you about it. Uh, so to respond to some of your points, uh, Matt, uh, you're saying that, okay, so if God was all alone before he created everything else, then wouldn't that be torture for God? Though I uh, admit my ignorance of these philosophical issues, I nonetheless uh, began to say that uh, the idea of creation ex nihilo was not a necessary Christian uh, belief. And uh, as James McGrath pointed out, uh, the earliest Christians may have had the idea of uh, uh, that, uh, you know, it's creation ex materia, in which case uh, we are open to the possibility uh, that the creation always existed, but in relation to God as creation of God. In that case, God was never alone. And so too with the love. God could have loved his creation and uh, some of his creatures could have loved him as well. So that's that exchange of knowledge. Uh <laughs> One of the underlying discussions, I'm just going to help you out here, one of the underlying discussions that deals with the issue of logic and knowledge, and the precondition of all of those things must be God. He is the initial and the ultimate. The nature of your God, the nature of my God is different. Your God cannot account for universals and particulars where my God can. That's something also worth discussing because if we have another discussion, I'll be asking you about it. that the creation always existed, but in relation to God as creation of God. In that case, God was never alone. And so too with the love, God could have loved his creation and some of his creatures could have loved him as well. So that's that exchange of knowledge. Uh <laughs> the knowledge of particulars. I am not familiar with this uh, philosophical concept. You seem to be saying uh, that if God is only one person, God could not equip the human mind to know particulars. And uh, and I, I don't know how that follows in philosophy. I haven't studied that, uh, but uh, you've made me curious. I'll be interested in that. If, you're in, if the entire debate hinges on this point, I would say, Matt, you have won the debate. I would say, Matt, you have won the debate. I would say, Matt, you have won the debate.